This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> to wait until I had sold my two rock um, to uh, make this video because uh, I feel like it would have been a silly video to make with a 3,600 pound amp kind of sitting there right um, but so 
the the title of the video I've you know bought like around four thousand pound amps and three hundred pound amps and this is kind of what I figured out so this is kind of just you know talking about some gear stuff as I sometimes do um, not exactly an important video of course but I'd love to hear your kind of favorite amps that you've ever purchased at any price range in the comments if you've got any I think for me I don't have one a Mesa Boogie Lone Star belongs on this list but I don't have one yes the the amps that I still have Matchless Lightning clone made by Rift Amps now I bought this from the fretboard forum for £150 which is kind of bonkers I think for a hand wired Matchless Lightning clone it's got a 6v6 power section so slightly different from Matchless Lightning in that regard. I've got this VHT D50 amp head, which I guess is part of what's really nudged me towards selling the two rock and maybe I'll do another video on that specifically. And then a 1965 Fender Pro Reverb, which is like from the first batch of Pro Reverbs ever made. So it's like number one. Uh, this is a Fender Tone Master Pro FRFR speaker. I've got a catalyst over there and yeah so I still have some amps I'm I'm trying to become a one amp boy um, but I don't think that's really gonna happen so anyway I guess the first thing to say is that probably all amps are too loud essentially um, uh, this is based on the experience of like actually playing in function bands and stuff and occasionally you come across a sound man who really doesn't want you to make any noise at all um if you're watching and so yeah in in that scenario like any of these things probably will be too loud and then another scenario where they're probably too loud is in general for home use now here's a thing that i thought would have made a difference to this but actually kind of doesn't you know like a 15 watt amp you'd assume is quite a lot quieter than even a 50 or 100 watt amp it's not the case in some cases it can be even more difficult to tame like a 15 watt amp the the amps that i found work best at, at any kind of volume uh, amps with a master volume so like that two rock or a lot of the mesa boogie amplifiers like the lone star has quite a usable master volume however one thing that you can't really get so much of is that with a a, a bunch of amps that i've tried like the mesa boogie lone star um this thing here it's when you get the master kind of around five six seven which is way 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 too loud for for most normal people gigging where you actually get the things that make it sound like an amp actually happening if that makes sense like where you get some kind of complex drive and you get some kind of compression happening it's often for me the sweet spot of an amp is way past where i'd be able to get it on a gig uh, I tried Eric Johnson's two rock settings on that classic reverb and it was crazy too loud. Um, I can't really get the pro reverb into drive because it would need to be on like eight or nine and that's too loud for the house. That's another project I want to work on. But in general, they're kind of too loud, right? So yeah, low wattage amps aren't quiet. They're not more quiet and they're high wattage amps aren't more loud. Often they're quite close in terms of volume. And I've actually found that the high wattage amps can sound better at lower volumes and oftentimes have a more usable master volume. It's my experience on that, having played a bunch of different amps. You'd assume that headroom is a thing that everyone wants when you read about people like, oh, this amp has so much clean headroom or this amp has so much headroom or, you know, I, I really liked the amp but it didn't have enough headroom. For me, I don't think headroom is a thing that I'm particularly looking for with an amp I'm either looking for it to be clean or or kind of driven and if it's driven I'm wanting it to compress a bit right so I think I'm using more drive than maybe some of these people that are looking for headroom and particularly when I compared like the drive channel of the VHT D50 to the Two Rock Classic Reverb the headroom thing just meant that the Two Rock maintained more dynamics and stuff but I was actually looking for a bit more of a smooth compressed tone which actually the VHT D50 did more and had kind of more mids so the headroom isn't the only factor 
and although it's a thing that we we talk about a lot and see people talk about a lot it might not even be a thing that you're looking for right so uh headroom as a thing that's always good is not necessarily similarly words like tight uh, i think is another thing where um people say oh it's really tight in the low end and this is a thing that the, the two rock had it was a bit tighter in the low end than the fender but what that normally means is there's like a bit less bass or it's a bit more controlled in the bass end um whereas kind of one of the things that i like about some amps is that as you turn up the gain actually things get a little bit more raw and a bit more um flubby uh, those are some of the things that i actually look for in an amp so something <laughs> with less headroom and more flubby for some reason is apparently what i look for in an amp to, to let me know that it is an amp um whereas things like a, a tight i kind of think of as a little bit more modeler ish for some reason this is a two-parter but i've kind of found that nothing really beats a fender clean the only downside with the fender stuff that i can really see is that because of the design of the amps it's kind of yeah where it is but you basically got this volume control to control the gain more or less as well right and that's kind of a little bit of a downside but for instance the pro reverb if i set that on three i can be really 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 happy with that and the the dumble clean thing as far as i can really tell seems to be basically like a fender clean there's not a whole lot in it um and you can pretty much confirm this when you hear people like john mayer robin ford kind of go between a fender clean and a two rock clean and they sound exactly like them essentially still right so john mayer has used vibe reverb um a dual professional robin ford uses super reverb you know that like if you can't have a dumble a fender clean is pretty much the next best thing um it won't necessarily do the dumble drive thing without a pedal but something like a zen drive can kind of get you there and a fender clean to me takes pedals incredibly well um i guess edge of breakup things is is where you're gonna find other amps do things differently and kind of really driven things although i think i want to try and get this out of these amps or like the pro reverb specifically i think if they were really cranked you might be surprised at what a fender kind of blackface amp can sound like but point two is i'm done with combos because they're too heavy essentially so i just think that having an amp on one side of your body uh is not good for the spine is what i've experienced so i had a mesa boogie mark three that was like 32 kilos because i had an ev speaker in it this pro reverb is crazy crazy heavy so i'm considering although i'm never going to gig it am i so it's got two ev speakers in this but i don't think i'm going to gig it so it doesn't really matter it's going to sit here and get played very occasionally like amps do <laughs> is what i found as well yeah so after buying so many amps like the first time you get it you'll turn it on you might play it for 45 minutes or something right if you're lucky the next time you turn it on you might play it for 30 and then it seems to me that f for most of the the amps that i've played my time kind of exponentially drops actually spending playing the amp and uh that for me is why it's not been kind of a sensible way to spend money but yeah no more combos i think the head format for me works nicely i've got a cab which is inexpensive and old the mesa boogie open back uh compact cab with an ev speaker it's old it sounds great and uh just the perfect cab for me um and then the thing with the heads is you can just pair them through that speaker and you save yourself all that space um so i think that's uh, the way forward for me uh the other thing is that the amps are becoming kind of a little bit of a niche situation right and um the more expensive you go with the amps to me it seems the more difficult they are to sell so that's like a little bit of caution with it um i feel like there's a little bit of a status thing when you're, you're getting a, a more expensive amplifier where you're paying for the perception of the brand and the prestige of the brand so two rock for example a good example you've got um matt schofield josh smith players like this i guess as well john mayer is a huge part of what drives the, the two rock audience um 
but I think some of what's going on there is like it's like the amp with the right name on it and for me that wasn't particularly kind of cool I think they are really awesome amps but it's not something that I needed to own um it kind of doesn't really sit too well with me it's kind of like having a nice car I guess or a really nice watch I don't have either of those things so yeah and ultimately what I found was that I'm just as happy with this VHT D50 which I bought for £550 as I was plugging into the Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature which I bought for 3600 and yeah basically the amps more or less kind of sit there occasionally getting used but most of the time I'm using the modeler to really get the amps cooking nicely you can use them with a load box but you might find and this is what I have found every time I've kind of compared this. When you do that and you pull up the same model in your amp modeler, whether it's Helix or Fractal or whatever, they're actually quite similar and close enough that it might not be worth the effort. So, yeah, that's what I found after buying and selling a load and load and load and load of amps. I think just as influential on the tone as changing the amp head, changing your speaker can be a thing so maybe it would be worth instead of having 16 different amps a couple of different cabs might get you a surprising amount of tonal variance um not something that i've necessarily heard someone suggest before but that could be a thing i think um because what i found is that i dial in things to be roughly similar right my clean tones are generally going to going to be actually properly clean my drive tones are going to be super dirty if I can get them out of an amp and there's not too much in between for me so maybe a speaker cab might be a more I get more tonal options out of that although I really think that I suit an EV speaker quite well it's quite a flat kind of um kind of decent speaker but I don't know let me know your thoughts in the comments your experiences with amps any you regret selling I'd love to know those thoughts um but that's kind of my my thinking at the moment is that yeah, the time to, to sell the very expensive amp because actually what I've already got, I get more than enough out of. And uh, yeah, cheers for stopping by, chat, chat, chatting about gear like it matters.